Let's do a second example. And this is the idea of counting surjections. So we start with some notation. For an integer n, let brackets n be shorthand for integers 1 through n. And now let snm count the number of surjections from n to m. Okay. So I'm asking you, calculate s53 by hand. Calculate the number of surjections uh, on two functions, on two functions. How many on two functions from a five element set, one, one through five, to the three element set, one, two, three? If you sort of know what you're doing, just keep working. If you lost, let's do it together. So I'm going to map the objects 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 1, 2, 3. And I gotta I gotta hit all of those. I gotta use all of them. It's an on to function. So for example, a constant function which maps all of these five elements to the same, that's not on to. Alright. So now in order to simplify my counting, I, I'm gonna arbitrarily talk about what are the set sizes. So how many Objects go to one, how many go to two, how many go to, th to three? So I could have three go, three go there, one go there, and one go there. So I could have, in other words, that's the distribution, three, one, one. I could have two go to one, two go to another, and one go to the third. Are there any other distributions? Are there any other ways to map five to three? I, I, I don't think so. Those are, that's exhaustive? Yes? So is two, two, one the same as one, two, two? No. No. So I'm, I'm, I'm telling the difference between all of my objects. So go back to like lecture three. This is a distribution of distinct objects to distinct cells. I can tell the objects between one and five. I can tell the objects between one and three and tell them they're all different. But I'm adding the additional requirement that there are no empty cells. Was that question clear? He wanted to know whether I can tell the difference, and he said it's 2, 2, 1. If that's the distribution, is that the same as 2, 1, 2? And I said, no, it's not, because what I'm saying is I can tell the difference between all of my objects. I can tell the difference between all of my cells. So I'm distributing the five objects into the three cells, but I add the additional requirement that the distribution should leave no empty cells. Okay, but now that we've talked about this, maybe we can do it. So, if I'm going to have the distribution 3, 1, 1, I'm going to choose, of the five elements, I'm going to choose three of them, and they're going to go here. Then I've got two left. I'm going to put one here and one there, but the choice is different. So, choose the three, that's five, choose three, and then two for this, because it's this, this one this way or this one this way. So five, choose three is 10, so this looks like 20, but that's 20 for this distribution one, two, three. But there are six permutations of one, two, three. So for the six permutations, take out all of the different ways to distribute those, 6 times 20 is 120. All right, so there's 120 ways to do it associated with that. All right, now what about 2, 2, 1? So for this guy, I'm going to take 5, choose 2. Okay, then I've got 3 that are left, and I'm going to take, of those, I'm going to take 3, choose 2. 
And then this guy gets what's left over. So it looks like this is 10 times 3 is 30. And now there are six permutations. So that's 30 times 6 is 180. Now, that would give a grand total of 300. Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Are you really convinced by what I just did? Um, because you can do one, two, three, or one, three, two, or two, three, one. All the six permutations of the three symbols. I'm hoping that you will say, I'm not 100% convinced by what you just did. Also, I'm hoping that you're saying, I don't think, since this is in the hundreds, I don't think I want to write them all out. I want to be selectively lazy and think about this at some higher level and get a formula that I can trust and use that formula to actually do a precise calculation. Question. How come uh, we don't consider the case where you have two possibilities for one, and then one possibility like the middle, and then like two possibilities for the end? I, that's right here. In this case, 2, 2, 1 is the same as 2, 1, 2. I, I did that when I did the permutations of them. I, 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 the only distributions are 3, 1, 1, and 2, 2, 1. That's all you can do. But this is unconvincing. I, I, yeah. Why can't you do this just like um, for each of those, do like the stars and bars multiplied by the number of elements? Because the stars and bars, the, uh, the uh, cells were distinct, but the objects were not. Right, so couldn't you then multiply it by the number of elements factorial? No. No, you can't. Uh, it will take me another 10 minutes to explain to you why you can't. So, so uh, I, I'm, what I'm, what's the teaching point here? You're supposed to be unconvinced by this, and you'll want to see a compact way to do this, and that's what we're going to do. All right. So determining S53 by hand, I'm not sure we did it. In fact, I'm actually pretty sure we didn't. All right, but let's keep going. 